Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be covering physical agent modalities. Before I get started, I want to preface, as usual, that there is a lot going on with PAMS. I may not cover everything, and depending on the source you look at, they might categorize some things in different categories of types of heat transfer. So just letting you know from the get-go that my information might not look exactly like yours, but I really want you guys to just understand what major categories different modalities fall under. So just follow me and hopefully this will all make sense. Let's start off by what physical agent modalities are. AOTA defines it as equipment including superficial and thermal agents, electrotherapeutic and mechanical agents. Now, PAMs can be used at entry level, but some states require additional uh, certification. So you might need to finish a certain level of competence or a PAM certification to utilize modalities with your patients and clients. I, for example, practiced PAMs all the time when I was in a rotation in Arizona in an outpatient hand setting, but in California, for example, you need to get certification before you can practice this. So depending on the state you're in, that's going to vary. And PAMS is a preparatory method, so it is not used alone as OT intervention, but it is used to support OT activities. And that makes sense because we are using a lot of different thermal agents, such as hot packs, to help make the muscles feel looser, warm up the tissues, and that's going to prepare for let's say, range of motion exercises. So it's preparatory in order to support the hands-on exercises you may be doing to facilitate activities of daily living. I'm gonna go ahead and start with types of heat transfer. I was pointing here and I'm like, okay, let's start here. <laughs> so types of heat transfer is just a breakdown of the different kinds of heat transfers that are out there. And there are four. Conduction is just the idea of heat transferring, so a hot pack or paraffin wax would be an example. Convection is similar, but what we're doing is using the heat to get to the tissues through a fluid motion. So that would include fluidotherapy and whirlpool. Sometimes I see whirlpool under conduction. I think it's because both of them are heat related. So again, depending on your source, you might see that differently. The third one is radiation, which is pretty straightforward, laser, and conversion is the last one, which would include things like ultrasound and cryotherapy, and that's using heat from, or transferring heat from internal friction. So let's get started with the different types of agents, starting with superficial. So as the word superficial would indicate, it's a lot more of a shallow level of heat. So we're thinking like centimeters. And if we apply something like a hot pack to the top of your skin, then it's going to radiate the effects into your skin by a certain amount of centimeters and it is superficial. So hot packs, cold packs, paraffin wax, whirlpool, phlidotherapy, and infrared are all thermal agents that are superficial. I feel like hot packs and cold packs are pretty straightforward. I just indicated certain things that it helps with. So hot packs would increase blood flow, it would increase healing. Cold packs are good with decreasing swelling and decreasing acute pain. Paraffin wax is going to decrease stiffness as well as pain. And when I think paraffin wax, the first thing I think of is arthritis. That is what I use the most for arthritis patients because it's so good for just really warming up all those tissues in your hands and getting them nice and just like lubricated to move. So that's what I think of for paraffin wax. Whirlpool is for wound care. So oftentimes you'll hear that it's used for deep riding and cleaning um, to help like a wound heal. Fluidotherapy is to decrease pain and increase mobility for small body parts. It's specific to small body parts because if you ever see 
what that machine looks like. It uses cornmeal or corn husk and it spins rapidly inside and you can stick either an arm or a leg into the machine and that's how it works. And I don't have too much experience with infrared, but that one decreases pain and tightness. So some of the few contraindications for using superficial thermal agents are listed down here. Several of them carry over to other thermal agent uses, and over time they kind of sound similar. So the main things you want to look out for are impaired cognition, impaired uh, sensation or neuropathy, uh, vascular supply or blood hemorrhage problems, and open wounds. Cognition and sensation are pretty straightforward. You need both in order for the patient to let you know if they're in any discomfort or pain, and if they can't tell you that, then these modalities can be unsafe because it can cause burn, or the metrics might be too high, there might be pain or discomfort going on, so that's very important that they are cognitively intact and that their sensation is intact to report to you. Overall, malignancies and acute inflammatory conditions, as well as cancer, are contraindications as well. Moving on to deep thermal agents, so now we are moving from the superficial to the deep, which means that it's going to have a more rapid effect than the um, superficial because the heat is going much deeper. So it's good for acute injuries and it gives more oxygen to the tissues at a faster rate. So I have three examples here. I am most familiar with ultrasound and phonophoresis. Ultrasound was used very frequently when I was in the hand setting and they use high frequency waves to heal tissues and you just kind of go in a circular pattern with the ultrasound machine. It goes deep as like five centimeters and they have different settings and that can really help heal the tissues. And there's also phonophoresis, and this one is a combination of ultrasound. And what we do is we use a topical medication and mix it together to help decrease inflammation. So phonophoresis is cool because you get all the benefits of the ultrasound, but then you also get like a topical steroid or some kind of medication that's going to help relieve pain as well. The third one is diathermy. I'm unfamiliar with this one, but this one uses a high frequency electromagnetic energy to decrease swelling and increase range. Last but not least, let's move to the electrotherapeutic agents. And I put a little lightning bolt over here to indicate the um, electro part. And all of these are going to help increase muscle strength increase muscle re-education and decrease pain and swelling. So there are several of these and I picked out the main ones that I think are the most popular and the most well known. Starting off with the TENS unit. The TENS unit is a transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation and this is going to decrease pain sensation as well as give patients the option to carry over something at home. So this is really nice because a TENS unit is very small and you can educate your patients on how to use it and they can do it at home for a home, pro a home program, which is great if the patient lives far away or if the cost of therapy is too much for them. That's a great one. And they have a lot of different settings as well. So it's pretty neat. Uh, the NMES is the neuromuscular electrical stimulation and it helps increase and lengthen, wow, that beeping sound, okay. Iontophoresis uses ionized medication and that's going to transfer to our tissues within an electric field. And it looks basically like a band-aid, but we use, I mostly use the dexamethasone and that is a little steroid that you can apply to the band-aid and it's set up to have like a plus and minus charge to be ionized like a battery and it sticks right on like a patch and does its thing so that's low maintenance and quick so that's nice the overall contradictions here will be similar to the thermal agents but we just need to make sure that we avoid any problems that have to do with the transfer of um electricity involved, so pacemakers and cardiac conditions, metal implants, as well as stimulators and sensory deficits are all contraindications for electrotherapeutic agents.
All right, so that is my PAMS overview. I hope this is helpful, and I will see you guys next time. Good luck.